Hello, Lawrence Grayson back again for shortformvideo.com. And uh, I've been a bit slack on the tutorials front recently, so I thought I'd make up for it by giving you a quick tutorial on how to create a brushed metal effect using the standard toolset in After Effects CS3, CS4, or CS5. Now, this technique will probably work in pretty much every single um, version of After Effects, but just to be on the safe side, I'll keep it to those. As usual, I'll be uploading the project file for this to my website at shortformvideo.com. So uh, if after you've watched the tutorial, you just want to go and grab it from there, that's where you'll find it. So that's enough of an intro, let's get started. Okay, first things first, as always, create a new composition. And we'll call this Brushed Metal. I've already set it up the way I want it, so we're looking at PAL widescreen square pixel, which is 1024 by 576, square pixels, 25 frames per second, and I've made it 10 seconds long. But obviously you can change these to uh, suit your own project needs. And I'll just hit OK on that. Next step, right click, select New and Solid. And we'll just create a standard white solid layer, and we'll call it Metal. Make sure it's the comp size, and just hit OK. The next step is to go to your Effects and Presets panel and type Noise, grab the Noise effect and drop it onto your Metal layer. Now that doesn't do anything straight off the bat, so uh, we do need to make a few changes before we move on. In your Effect Controls panel, increase the amount of noise to 100%. Now if we just scroll in so you can see it better, you'll notice that it's created this really, really hideous collection of brightly colored pixels, which is exactly what we don't want. So uh, to fix that, you just change the uh, noise type to monochrome, and we do that by unchecking the box. And as you can see, that immediately removes all the color data and gives us this series of gray pixels instead of colored pixels. While we're here, we also want to uh, uncheck the clip result values box, and that will just give us a much wider spread of dark and light pixels. Now before I move on, I should probably give credit where it's due. I think I got the original technique for this from Chad Perkins in his book The After Effects Illusionist, which I can strongly recommend. Chad actually uses the directional blur um, effect to create the next step of this project, whereas I actually prefer to use the fast blur. And I'll tell you why. Let me just uh, find the fast blur and apply it to the metal layer. We're going to increase the blurriness value to uh, 200. And if I scroll back out, you'll see that's blurred everything out, so that's absolutely not what we want. In the Blur Dimensions drop-down, however, all you need to do is select Horizontal, and immediately we get that brushed metal look. Now, the key difference between using Directional Blur and Fast Blur is that uh, Fast Blur has this Repeat Edge Pixels box, um, whereas Directional Blur doesn't. Now, uh, you'll probably notice at the sides of this image, we've got these dark shadows. Now, they don't look that unpleasant, and you may want to keep them, in which case you can use either Fast Blur or Directional Blur, and they both will uh, give you this end result. If, on the other hand, you want to get rid of them, then Fast Blur just lets you select the Repeat Edge Pixels box, and voila, they're gone. So that's that done, but there's actually one thing that's not apparent until you actually scrub through the timeline. The trouble with the noise effect is that it's animated, so uh, every frame creates a new selection of pixels, and obviously the Fast Blur reflects that. So instead of getting this nice solid um, brush metal effect, we get this fast-moving series of lines, which is exactly what we don't want. But there's a very easy way to fix this. So select your metal layer, go to Layer and Precompose, or you can hit Control shift and c as the shortcut. We'll name it uh, Metal Precomp. Make sure the Move All Attributes into the New Composition button is checked, and hit OK. Once you've done that, you can right-click on the Precomp, go to Time, and just select Freeze Frame. And that'll create a stop keyframe at the beginning of the timeline, which just locks all the animation in place and gives us this nice static image, which is exactly what we're after. So the next thing I want to do is uh, create some type. So select the Type tool, and we'll type Brushed Metal. Now, uh, as always, you can select whatever um, typeface takes you fancy. In my case, I've selected Stencil Standard and Bold. It's 140 pixels high with uh, leading of 124. Now, so leading is just the uh, gap in between the lines. 
and I also like to change it from um, kerning metrics to uh, optical and that just closes up all the text. Now it's a little bit skewy at the moment so I'll uh, just tap the apostrophe key to bring up my guidelines and we'll just nudge that into place so that it's centered. Now I want to make this text look as though it's been punched out of a sheet of steel um, so there are two steps to this process. The first is to right click on your text layer go to blending mode and select silhouette alpha and that creates an alpha channel based upon the text that we've created. The next step is to select your text layer and the metal precomp layer and precompose that as well. So go to layer, precompose, move all the attributes into the new composition and we'll call this text punch out and hit OK. Once we've precomposed those layers together and flattened them out, we can right click select layer styles and bevel and emboss and you can see that adds um, a beveled edge to the uh, to the edges of the type. Now I'm just going to tweak it a little bit to make it look the way I want it to. Um, we'll leave it at inner bevel, we'll change the technique to chisel hard and we'll drop the size right down to 3. What I'd also like to do is change the highlight mode to overlay and the angle of the light to 90 and that just gives us more of a top light to bottom light effect. Now it's looking nice but it's still looking a little bit clean and I want to go for that slightly grungy look and a simple way to do that is to go back to your effects panel and find your fractal noise, drag that onto your text punch out layer and uh, it'll just replace it with the, uh, the, the fractal noise defaults um, which are almost good enough for our use but we just need to make a couple of changes. What we want to do here is have the brushed metal text show through and to do that we just swap the blending mode from normal to soft light. Now that's still a little bit strong so I'm going to take the opacity value down probably to about 35% and that just dirties it up a bit. Last but not least, I'm going to select the text punch out layer, turn it into a 3D layer by just checking the 3D layer properties, and that'll allow me to create a new light source. So I've got a layer, new, and light. Make sure that spot is selected. Um, I'll be working with a, an intensity of 100%, a cone angle of 90 degrees, and 50% 50, uh, 50 feather. Um, you can change these later on, so uh, don't worry about getting them right straight off. And we'll just hit OK. Now it's a little bit close, so um, I'm just going to have a bit of a play around with the position of the light. Now you can do it one of two ways. You can scroll down to the uh, Transform Properties and, uh, and play with the position there, or you can just simply grab the uh, position handles in the frame and move it to where you want it to be. So I've actually set the uh, reflection for the bevel and emboss effect so it's a, a light source coming from the top downwards. So I've just moved it up on the y-axis. I'll drag the point of interest down, pull it a little bit to the left on the y-axis and uh, I'll just move it out on the z-axis. So there you have it, a, a nice and simple brushed metal um, effect using the standard tool set in After Effects. Um, just a quick reminder, if you want the project file for this, I'll be uploading it to my website at shortformvideo.com. So if you want it, that's where you'll find it. As always, hope you found it useful. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.